Hey guys, um, there's a reason why I title this message, but what are you doing? Kind of goes along with the why. Why are we doing what we do? Got this message through another preacher that was on YouTube, um, but it was a different message he was preaching on. <clears throat> but I started reading it and I read part of it. I'm still studying it, but what's the part about Elijah and he was in a cave? This wasn't his message, but this is I started picking this up. God said, what are you doing? Kind of almost in that same context and demeanor. And just, what are you doing? Send it to Cain, too. What's your, what, what are you doing? What, where, why'd you lose your countenance? Why are you angry? Because I don't accept your offering. When you do, when you do good, I accept it. When you don't, I don't. Because sin is the line in the door. So, you know, what are we doing, guys, with what God's showing us, teaching us, leading us, guiding us, directing us? <clears throat> you don't have to be a prophet to, <clears throat> for God to be using you. You can be the doorkeeper at the church and be perfect will of God. I don't know. <clears throat> that's a whole other message, but that's gotten way out of hand. Everybody wants to be somebody that they're not. A lot of people. Why? What are you doing? Kind of goes along the same lines of that theme. But so, uh, it's. I am going to be inspirational in this, but I'm just. I'm just laying that question out there. What are you doing with what God's given you? It doesn't have to be money. You know, it could be this cup. You know, this cup of coffee. So what am I doing? I'm drinking it, but. Look at my cup. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Be not in your understanding. Acknowledge Him in all your ways and He'll direct your paths. <laughs> Don't lean on this. Go to this. But <clears throat> I'm going to kind of go down this path. So maybe at the end of it, just, just please, please just listen to this whole message because it'll make sense. <clears throat> um. Not one, but probably six, at least five, maybe six, storms in my wife's and I's life right now as we speak. So what am I doing with it? What am I, what am I doing? Through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Look at that message I put out, but that's one of the storms. But I'm going to tell you about a couple of them, but some of them I'm not even going to get into the details of the who's and the why's and the, all that because it's not, that's not of God. That's not of Jesus. That's not of the Holy Ghost. That's not of his word. Eventually, yes, the parts that are mine that I can own, Cause it's like the good, the bad, and the ugly. One of them is mine, self-inflicted, ugly, bad. I'll probably have to clean the deck on that one. I'm sure I will. Humble myself. But that will become a message. And I don't care, I've already shared some down at the homeless shelter with some of the people and other people about some other messy stuff that happened in my life. The part that I did hurts, the selfish, self-centered self. And I can make a bunch of excuses for some of it. Some of it, I got no excuse. It's me. It hurts, but One of them, though, was this. Actually, I'm going to share two. Um, because you'll see, but I've already seen some miracles in some of them. One of them happened Christmas Eve night, guys. Four o'clock. I can't share the details of that one without asking the people involved. <laughs> but a miracle came out of it. A huge miracle that had been needing to come out of it. And it's not done yet. It's like, wow, God. Look what you did for these people that we really love. Our loved ones. 
it was just as much of a blessing as 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 God opening the windows of heaven and pouring a million dollars into my hands, honestly. Way more than that. One a million dollars, but so I already see God's hand and I see God's hand in another one too. I'm gonna to share with you. That through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. Became a message. Couldn't walk, literally would fall over, went to the doctor. Long story. Some strokes that that in the end of the day, after a bunch of MRIs. Brain loss, it's moderate to severe. One part of my brain it took was the balance. Some cognitive thinking, brain loss. Okay, what does that mean, doc? Well, just got this from some specialist, this kind of dumb look. Oh, you know, what do I do? So I'm like, okay, but the through it all part, I haven't fell in months, but I used to fall all the time, literally physical therapy so I'm like okay well I can exercise my brain I can do that okay well this was what God did I was like because when you hear it there's a reason why we just I mean I had a shoestring budget guys on this one didn't have a lot of cash I, I um I needed some computer help and I already spent my computer budget on this some stuff that's a whole nother miracle that he already worked out but this is why i need to stick on this one but so i was trying to do it for you know really for zero or zero dollars <clears throat> and so i was praying about it i said to the lord what do i do Cause i really don't have the money to spend because of some of the other trials that stuff that we're going through <laughs> not broke i mean but you know, I'm drinking my coffee, so lights are on, and I'm on a computer, so. But money's just a little, t things are a little tight right now. But I already see God's hand, and I've already seen some miracles, and I've already seen see some things transpiring. This is one of them. He did do it for zero. And I needed some good help. And I wasn't getting any. I was surrounded by all kinds of young people that, Got our own computer, and it was like, man, I asked people for help. I, you know, one guy did help. I was paying him like 50 bucks when he'd help for a couple hours, but he ended up getting a job. And so I get that, he, you know, he's a great kid, and just didn't have the time. I get that. So that kind of dried up. So I was like, God, what do I do? Jesus, what do I do? <laughs> Told me a organization to call on. And I was like, man, I don't even like that organization, God, because I just don't see him doing a lot that are helping people. I was wrong. So I call him out of the blue, out of prayer. <laughs> oh, yeah. I started today. I went to orientation last week. I'm going to be in a six-week computer class free of charge. I don't think it's a lot. You know, I mean, I probably maybe a five, six hundred dollar class for community college or whatever, but it was still a blessing to me. But I'm going to be get 12 hours of college credit. I don't even know if that's a lot or not. But <clears throat> some kind of degree or something, certificate from in Excel and from a community college too, and just kind of intense. <clears throat> I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it or not. It's going to take a lot of prayer on God, but it's, takes, it's, it's also exercising my brain, which is what I wanted to do. And it was handed to me. Gift from God. So I was thinking about that one day, driving home from a, from a church. Same way I always go. And this church had been highlighted. And I didn't know it was a church, but it had been highlighted for three months, four months. Drive by it on Highway 30. It's a highway in Dallas. And I was like, but right now I'm kind of at that point where it's like connectivity. Okay, God, he's telling me to connect the body. And the body, he said, the body's really sick. And he said, a lot of 
My people have an orphan mentality and heart. They don't know who the Father is. Like, okay, God. So, I'm just being directional, guys. So, he performed that miracle. Well, it's small, yeah, maybe. To you guys, to me, it was pretty big. But maybe to some of y'all, one. But it was just, you know, seeing his handiwork. So, what are you doing? Ask. Seek him. Humble yourself. Pray. Seek my face. Bring it to God. Bring it to Jesus, the Holy Ghost. So, One of the other storms, but, but okay, so he's telling me to do the connectivity though. Pull up to this intersection, same way I've always come home, maybe a hundred times, honestly. A long time, a lot. This church was at the top of this little hill when I got to this intersection. It was on 30, but sometimes I would go up about 30 and pass it. I never really put the two and two together. But I looked up. And maybe 300 feet in front, there it was. Been driving that way for, I said over 100 times, it never really, and even after four months ago when the Lord started highlighting, it never, it never clicked, connected. He said, go there. Because he kept highlighting it. I'm like, okay. My wife and I, like I said, we're in the midst of a bunch of storms. So it's Sunday, we really needed to be together, connecting together. Because we kind of need each other right now. Like I said, you know, one of the storms was, I think I said it earlier, but. <clears throat> well, let me go back. So, I go. Go to service. I had a testimony service. I got to speak a little bit. Not long, I kept it short. But said what it needs to be said on a few things. Not really air and dirty laundry or anything. It was just good stuff. Good scriptures that the Lord had given me. So that's kind of where I'm at. It's like, man, I'm just going to do the good. <clears throat> and keep it at that. <clears throat> the part of through it all. I learned to trust in Jesus. So what's he telling me to do? So then... Here comes, you know, the service was great. And I was talking to a couple different people and he highlighted a couple different people, kind of. And then there was this one guy and his wife standing over in the corner. He highlighted him a little bit, but, you know, I kind of ignored that, sort of. You know, I started talking to somebody else and because I talked to him earlier. And but my wife's not at heart is the broken. We minister in a homeless shelter. He's been dealing with me about expanding that. I didn't know if I was going to have time. How am I going to do all this? And still do the other stuff. My wife's job and everything. But that's one of the storms. And I'm about to tell you that one. Yes. At least not the details. But enough of it. So. I'm just trying to connect the body. We do Sunday night service at a homeless shelter. It houses 400 people. And you know, I don't know there's anywhere from 30 to 50 people. There are always various different people. So it's a you know, pretty decent service. Handed to us, so too. We've been doing it about three years. We always give them snacks um, at the end. But it's just our heart. Give them Bibles too. So I'm looking for the connectivity. This couple was highlighted, but I didn't really, you know, well, suddenly the guy walks over to me, service is over, and everybody's talking and leaving, and we just get to talking. Him and his wife are at the same shelter on Thursday night, 7.30 service. My wife and I do Sunday night. I'm starting to try to connect them to these dots, and there's some other things, too, that I'm, the Lord's telling me to do, and it's like, okay. And in the midst of the storms, but, so, there it is. There's the connectivity. Well, uh, six months ago, I ran into a guy at our church. Our church we were going to, anyhow. Um, at the time. And, 
random, seemingly random. There he is. We just got to talking. He's from another church, just kind of visiting. Nothing wrong with that. I mean, he's just... And him and another guy that go to this other church do Wednesday nights at the same shelter. So, but I'm kind of... Because of one of the storms that I was in, the block of time that I had was, you know, I was wore out physically. When the God's will kind of got sucked into some stuff. I'll share the details, I'll show you and spare you the details. But it wasn't God's will. But it was my lack of trust. And I already see his hand moving and some stuff in that realm. I just turned it over to him almost instantly, too, honestly, guys. More to come. Because he literally got us to the place with these storms where it's like, man, we got to trust you in all this, God. In one of the storms, I don't know if I shared this earlier, but anyhow, I'm going to reshare it. But one of the storms that I created most of mostly involved in self, good, bad, and ugly. Some of it's real bad, some of it's real ugly. I can't even see the ship, guys, like the, when Jesus was in the boat and they were worried about it sinking and called and, you know, like, peace be still. And I don't even see a boat. It sunk a long time ago. And I'm not, I had nothing to bail, I don't let alone bail with, I don't have nothing to bail off. There's nothing there. <sighs> it's like, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And I already see some miracles in that. It's like, okay, God, I'm going to pull a Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego out of this one. Storm, fiery trial, I don't care. I know who I serve. I know what he told me to do. Trust in him. And I am. And I've seen all these things. And I'm not looking for a miracle, guys. I'm not looking for you to send me a, a million dollar check. Great if you do, but I don't want 10 bucks from you. That's why I don't even put out there. I don't, if that's going to be an issue, I don't, it's irrelevant to me. Yes, there's things that the Lord's showing me to do. It's him anyhow, so that's, you know, <sighs> pray. Pray is what I would like from you guys. I really need all the prayer you can give me. I'll take that first, honestly. Just pray. But, so, you know, then my, my wife lost her job the week before Christmas. But we knew it was coming. It was part of our storm, part of the messiness of us, part of the... You know, the bad, the good, the bad, the ugly, some right decisions, some other people's decisions, some ungodly decisions that people did, some downright demonic attacks. Let's be honest with you. Those details, I will tell you. But that's okay. You know, because I'm moving on from that. But it's like, okay, all these, all these storms, but I'm learning to trust in him through it all even more. So, my point is, guys, what are you doing with what God's given you? Because, I'll end with this. It was eight, it was eight, maybe six. Look it up. I've got them all. It's all about the storms coming to America. And the idols coming down. So, I had some stuff that had to come down, guys. This message is getting a little too long, but <clears throat> so I had some stuff that had to come down. And he told me, he said, the storm, we were going to go through the storms first, me and my wife. And then he gave me the dates, 8, 11, 2020, and 9, 11, 2020. There was a month-long storm coming to America because it's going to purge, separate. Time to choose, guys. No more fence sitting. No more lukewarm Christianity. None of that's going to work. <clears throat> no, 
Not anymore. I'm going to put out one tomorrow that you need to really read because or watch because it's going to correlate to this. But he wants to go into those secret places of our heart, the darkest, dirtiest, messiest place where we won't even go. So we isolated it, we insulated it, we covered it up, whatever. Surreal, kind of, because he wants to heal us and make us whole so we can stay in in these last days, so we can be a righteous people without spot, blemish, and wrinkle. That's what the storm is coming. It's not going to be destructive. It's going to be to clear a path. It's going to be to decide. And I'm going to end with this, but this is part of it. I'm going to have to put more. You just, you need to watch these guys and just, because there's parts in all of them, but that stone that the builders rejected, if we don't fall on it and on his word and his promises and his truth and his trust, if we fall on it, he's gonna do what he promised and help us get it clean and righteous people. If it falls on us, grinds them to powder. Nobody wants to hear that. All these other warm, fuzzy feeling messages, guys. There's plenty of them that aren't. And I'm not trying to be the art guy either. Because I was in the Pentecostal movement for almost 10 years and the holiness movement for... an all-black church, guys, for over six years. All white guy. I'm not prejudiced. I was just glad to be saved. It was in the 80s. Maybe I was a token white guy. I don't know. But that's all another message. But <clears throat> what are we doing with what God's given us? You know? So we just have to just do what he tells us to do. Me right now, it's this, okay? Sorry for the hand gestures, my wife gets on me about that. Probably lame, even these videos, but you know, the content's great, honestly. It's all great news. Um, but I'm not gonna preach these hellfire and brimstone messages. But there is a storm coming, guys. I'm not creating it. I'm not calling it down. I'm not stopping the rain, praying, I'm not, none of that. Some of that can become sensationalism and nonsense anyhow. <laughs> can be. You know, we have to be very careful and cautious of that too. But it's all unto something, unto his greater purpose. He wants to clean us up, guys. So let's not go down the road of sin is in, God, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, and the Bible are out. Let's bring them back. Pray for this nation. Pray for your brothers and sisters. Pray for people that despitefully use you. Even the people that you disagree with. Those are, you know, it's easy to love your neighbor if they love you and they exalt you and they just, that's easy. Give you that warm, fuzzy feeling, attaboys and all that. It's when they kind of grate you. Get under your skin, disagree with you. Don't look like you. Act like you, pray like you, whatever. So anyhow, what are, what are we doing guys? Quit hiding in these caves, whatever they are, hurt, sin, um, religion, a, a church, a job, a, a marriage relationship what are you hiding guys what are we doing why, why God wants to set you free of all these incumbent things but 
but also not to be the wild, wild west guy and run through and shoot the place up. Why? Are you doing what you do? What are you doing? So anyhow, I'm going to end with that, guys, because this one already got too long. I try to keep them short, but it just doesn't, doesn't happen. I am very sorry. You can contact me at Jesus is Alive in America at gmail.com directly. Um, I've got a blog page. Just type in Jesus is Alive in America. Go to our website, um, YouTube, Facebook, Instagram. Comment, please comment. I, you know, agree, disagree. I need to hear it, guys. So do others. Let's talk about some of this stuff. Not just talk about it, but you know, through prayer and fasting and dedication, and let's get it out there and, you know, kind of start cleaning stuff up. Love you guys. See you soon.